Over the past six months, I've worked with over 200 software developers and helped dozens of them land six-figure software engineering roles. Now that's despite the market being cooked, AI taking your jobs, layoffs incoming, even in this market, which is a little bit questionable, tons of people are landing jobs simply because they have a strategy. If we rewind back four or five years ago, you didn't really need a strategy. You could apply to any kind of role. You probably were going to get interviews. And if you knew how to code and can pass some basic lead code, you were going to be completely fine. Now I talk with developers every single day who have applied to thousands of positions. They get ghosted. No one calls them back or the few roles that do get back to them. They're not a fit for or they can't pass the interview because they're applying to any role under the sun. So in this video, I want to explain to you a very simple rule that will allow you to break through the noise in the market and actually stand out and start generating some opportunities. Now, the way I'm going to do this is by sharing with you legitimate examples of people I've actually worked with one on one that I've had a call with that have taken this advice to heart and have seen a massive difference and ended up landing a job. OK, so let's get into it. Now, the rule is pretty simple, right? It means pick a niche. It's right in the title. I'm not trying to hide it from you, but I want to convince you why this is the case because a lot of people simply don't believe me when I tell them that really the secret to success here is simply niching down. Now, a lot of developers believe that if they apply to 4,000 jobs, 5,000 jobs, I've seen this by the way, that surely they have to get something. Someone has to call them back. They're going to get lucky. And to me, that's the equivalent of going into the casino and just spinning the slot machine thousands of times, hoping that you're going to win the jackpot, right? They're not doing anything. They're not taking you know, life into their own hands. They're simply spraying and praying, and they're just hoping that someone is going to give them a job. Now, almost every time I see these types of students, their resumes all look the same. What I mean by that is that they have no specialization. They're very broad, general software engineers. While they may have some impressive experience or some cool projects, it's not really clear what they're actually good at. And they have maybe seven different programming languages, C++, Python, JavaScript, Go, Rust, whatever you name it. They have 20 different frameworks. They have every skill under the sun. And I simply just don't believe that they can be good at all of those things. And that's the exact same thing that employers are thinking when they review your profile. In today's market, you need to have a specialty. Even if you're entry level, even if you're just graduating college, you're coming out of a boot camp, you need to pitch yourself as someone valuable in a particular field. These students thought that if they have kind of more general resume, they have a lot of these skills, because they can apply to so many jobs, they're going to get an opportunity. But the pure fact that they can apply to that many jobs and that they have that many things on their resume is the reason they get screened out. Now, let me give you a different example that's concrete of someone who is doing this right before they joined the DevLaunch program. Now, this person lived in San Francisco. They were more at a mid-level, and they had been applying specifically to self-driving robotic car companies in San Francisco. Now, they told me they applied to about 15 companies. They got 10 callbacks. Of those, I believe seven or eight of them led to interviews. And the reason they joined the program was they were struggling passing those interviews, but they had no issue generating them. Now, I was asking them, you know, how are you able to do that? Like, how did you get that many interviews? And then we started diving into their niche. I looked at their profile, I looked at their resume, I looked at their LinkedIn, and it was very, very clear that this person was very good at working on self-driving cars and had done that for the past two jobs in San Francisco. They knew that if they just went down into this niche, and even though there's only 20 or 30 companies they could apply to, they're going to get opportunities. So think of the difference, right? This person only has a pool of probably 30 companies that they can even find that do the thing that they're good at. Whereas you have 5,000 companies that you can potentially apply to because you have no specialization or no niche, and they're getting all of the callbacks. This is kind of the mindset shift that I want you to have. The more niche you are, the fewer positions you actually qualify for, the higher chance you have of actually getting called in. So I challenge you right now, have a look at your profile, have a look at your resume, and genuinely ask yourself, if you were an outsider and you were reading this, what type of developer would you pinpoint yourself as? Would you say you're a DevOps engineer, front-end engineer, back-end engineer? What language would you say you're best with? What technology are you the best with? These are the questions that I'm going to have as someone who's hiring you. And if I can't immediately get the answer when I look at your profile, it's very unlikely that I'm going to call you in for an interview. Today, companies need valuable employees that can provide value from day one. They don't want general software engineers, slight exception from big tech companies because they hire a little bit differently. Most companies out there want someone who already knows the tech stack and technology that's used in that company. So what I highly suggest you do is pick a specialization. 
the more niche you can go, the better. At minimum, you need to be on one side of the stack, front end, back end, DevOps, ML, AI, embedded systems. That's the absolute minimum. Within that, you should have a set of tools and a tech stack that you're most proficient in. For example, if you're a front end developer, are you an Angular front end developer? Are you a React front end developer? Are you a Ruby on Rails developer? Whatever, right? Like I'm just giving an example. That's what you need. All of the people that I've worked with over the past six months, again, I've worked with over 200 developers. As soon as they've done this, they've seen a massive change in the response rate. And I'm going to give you two examples right now. Now, the first example I have for you is Jamario. Um, my background has always been in uh, computer programming. Um, it was game development initially was what got me into programming in general. Um, and then I turned, I took that, took my love for that and turned it into a career goal. Now I pick him because he's probably going to be similar to a lot of people watching this video. When I started working with him, I believe he was 22. He was just about to graduate university. He was living in, I believe, Los Angeles or somewhere in California, going to one of the schools there. And he was really struggling to get opportunities for a full-time role right out of school. Now his unique experience was that he actually had worked as an audio video technician and he had done a bunch of AV related work. Now he wanted to become a software engineer. We weren't trying to get him an AV role, but what we realized quite quickly is that because his profile was so general and he had these AV skills and he had like some software engineering skills, he was just completely being overlooked by pretty much every single company. So his branding, when we first started working together was like, you know, computer science graduate. Like that's what he had on his LinkedIn. That's kind of what his resume looks like. And we completely shifted that around. What we did is we essentially did kind of a hybrid approach where we pitched him as a software engineer with strong AV skills. Because of this, and as soon as we made this shift on his LinkedIn and changed his headline, a bunch of recruiters started reaching out to him because believe it or not, there's a ton of AV companies that also need software engineers. So now he got all of these AV companies reaching out to him that wanted to hire him. I believe he had three interviews. He got two offers and then he was able to pick the offer that was the best fit for him. His offers were for $95,000 and $85,000 per year, fresh again, brand new out of school. And he accepted the $85,000 per year offer because he liked the company better. And he told me, and if you don't believe me, you can watch from this video right here, that the number one shift he had was as soon as he picked that specialization, he was now in demand, right? He had a little bit of leverage. He had a skill he could provide value from day one. And then he just needed to prove his software engineering skills, which many of you are able to do with the correct preparation. Okay, that's one example. Now, the next example I have for you is Deepika. Now, she joined our program as a senior software engineer. She was working as a front end developer before at a senior level, making about $110,000 per year until she got laid off. After she got laid off, she spent six months looking for jobs. She applied to 2000 companies and she couldn't get anything. She had a few surface level interviews, but nothing led to an offer. What I noticed right away when I was working with her is that she was pitching herself as a full stack developer. Really weird because she had a lot of really good front end development skills. And I pretty much told her, look, all we have to do is shift this to pitch you as an expert in front end development, which you are, and we're immediately going to start seeing results. So we did that, we shifted around the resume, we shifted around the LinkedIn, we focused all of it on her front end development skills. And I believe two months later, she landed a front end developer position, senior job in Canada. It's not as um, you know great as a job market as the US, making $140,000 per year. So $30,000 per year raise after being laid off when all she wanted was a job. Okay, I have a lot of other examples, but these are two that are very clear where the specialization is the thing that made the biggest difference. You as a developer are saying, salesperson when you're trying to get a job. You need to sell your skills. You need to sell your value. And if you think about any of the people that make a lot of money in this world, they're all specialized in one certain area. Think of the general surgeon versus the heart surgeon. Who makes more money, right? Think of the general software kind of full stack developer versus the AI engineer who does research for LLMs. And that's all they do, who got paid $100 million by Mark Zuckerberg. One thing that I like to remind myself of is that life is very short. It seems long, you know, when you're young, but as you get older, it becomes, you know, faster and faster and you only have so much time. And with that time, you can only really get extremely good at a handful of things, right? Three, four, maybe five skills at most, especially if you're talking about something related to your career. You have to pick one thing to go deep on. If you're an expert and you spend 20 years mastering a skill, you're in demand. People want you. You don't need to beg for work, right? Think about any industry, any field. The people that are the most niche make the most amount of money. So right now as a developer, you need to kind of comprehend that and realize you can't be this generalist 
you need to specialize in a particular area and you need to start now so that by the time it's five, six, seven years later, you are an expert in this one particular field and you're no longer struggling for employment, you have options coming to you. Right now, I'm kind of a Python expert, right? I don't say that to brag, but there's an enormous amount of evidence on the internet that supports the fact that I really know how to code in Python. I have over 10,000 hours of Python coding experience. I have over 1,500 YouTube videos. Almost all of them cover Python topics. If I set up a resume and I set up as a general software engineering resume, sure, I'll probably get a few hits, but I would be significantly better off setting it up as an expert in Python and positioning myself as a Python backend developer. If I do that, almost every company I apply to is going to call me back because of the enormous amount of evidence, okay? That's what I want you to remember. You always need to prove people that you have a skill and the more skills you show, the harder it is to prove that. Pick a niche, pick a field, narrow down. I promise you if you follow this strategy, it's gonna help you. And if you want hands-on one-on-one assistance with this as well as interview preparation and really everything related to landing a job, consider joining the DevLaunch program by applying down below. It's only for serious people that already know how to code, but we've had a ton of success and I guarantee we can help you. Again, if you're serious about actually putting in the work and following the strategy. Now, if you've stuck around until the end of the video, I can tell that you value education and improving day by day. Now, that's why I wanna share with you a fantastic resource that you can take advantage of, and that's Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. They adopt a first principles approach, ensuring you understand the why behind each concept. Every lesson is interactive, engaging you in hands-on problem solving, which has proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lectures. The content is developed by top-notch educators, researchers, and professionals from renowned institutions like MIT, Caltech, and Google. Brilliant emphasizes enhancing your critical thinking abilities through active problem solving rather than memorization. As you learn specific subjects, you're simultaneously training your mind to think more effectively. Consistent daily learning is crucial, and Brilliant makes it effortless with their bite-sized lessons, allowing you to acquire meaningful knowledge in just a few minutes each day, which is perfect for replacing idle screen time. Additionally, Brilliant offers a comprehensive range of computer science and Python courses, as well as extensive AI workshops, guiding you from a complete beginner to an expert through practical, hands-on lessons. To learn for free on Brilliance, go to brilliant.org slash techwithtim, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliance has also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliance.